Today, we're taking a look at the different tools I use for soldering. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're gonna to take a look at the different tools that I keep around for soldering. I don't use all the tools all the time, but you know, some things like my soldering station, I do use all the time. So we're gonna take an individual look at them. Also, we have the Big Clive inspired, come on, supercomputer running in the background and it is being run by Elvis the Alligator. All right, so first tool is uh, the largest one in area, and that's simply a silicone soldering mat. You know, silicone generally does not burn. Sure, if you get it hot enough, it'll burn. Get anything hot enough, it'll burn. But it'll prevent you from burning your desk or you know anything like that. These are relatively expensive. You can find them under twenty dollars U.S. Just about anywhere next up let's move to the soldering station itself there are a number of soldering stations available you can pick them up anywhere from twenty dollars to hundreds of dollars i like this one this is the ksger t12 type soldering station it is a temperature controlled station and for general soldering i use 350 degrees c now, when you're soldering, it's generally not a good idea to leave your iron just laying around. The chances of burning yourself or burning a component or anything else are just too great. So you want one of these springy type soldering holders. They're really nice. Keep your soldering iron out of the way. And if you are a proponent of the wet sponge, they generally have a holder for the wet sponge. So next, you want to keep your soldering iron clean. You want that tip to be nice and shiny. So how do you do that? Well, you need to clean it off in between every couple of joints you solder. You can either use the wet sponge method or you can use the brass wool type method. It's entirely up to you. I'm not going to get into the debate of which one is better which one is worse you decide you can pick up this exact one here which is probably not a Heiko what's it called a uh, tip cleaner uh, 599B I got this from eBay I think for like five dollars so I doubt that it's truly a Heiko next up is solder hundreds of different brands of solder but for electronics i like to use uh, 60 40. that's 60 percent tin 40 percent lead and the diameter of this is 0.8 millimeter which comes out to what 0.031 inches this is just a, a cheap brand that i bought from amazon American solder. I really like the MG Chemicals brand. They had this really cheap. I thought I'd give it a try, and I have really no complaints with it whatsoever. When we talk about keeping our tip clean and shiny, you want to also keep it tinned at all times. That's a thin layer of solder on the tip of your iron. That way, it doesn't oxidize. But sometimes your iron gets dirty and it doesn't want to hold that layer of, of solder on it. For that, what I like to use is this paste type flux. Get it anywhere. And I'll put links to these down below. And this is what I do. This is all I do. Dip it in here. Let it hold for a few seconds. Bring it out. Clean it. Attempt to tin it. I mean, get some, get some solder on there. Wipe it off. Do it again. You know, you do that a few times. You uh, will generally be able to get your tip nice and clean. An alternative to that 
is sal ammoniac and these little tins of what are called tip cleaner which i believe simply have some sort of flux along with solder in there you can see how it kind of silvers up when you do that and cleans your tip very nicely so while we're talking about flux there's the paste type flux which I find really good for cleaning your soldering iron but not so great for soldering for that you might want to use something like a solder pen this is a Kester solder pen um, these aren't uh, that's what I'm looking for highly toxic however they are somewhat toxic so you don't want to ingest anything like that also I keep on hand ruby fluid which is another more toxic and more caustic solder but if you have a material that just doesn't want to solder ruby fluid is really good for cleaning that up but if it doesn't work we can go even further what you can do is you can put you know a drop or two of your ruby fluid on there heat it up with your soldering iron and if it still doesn't want to clean up and solder right take the solder you can get one of these brass scrubbing brushes which work okay but what I like is scotch bright put some scotch bright on there Give it a little rub, takes off the surface oxidation. Then get your soldering pen, do a little bit of, or flux pen, a little bit of flux on there. And you will find that you'll be able to solder stuff with really no issues whatsoever. Now, sometimes it can be difficult to keep your components in place. And for that, I have a selection of these, I call them soldering picks. They're also called soldering assists. They come in different shapes. Like, see this one with a little bent tip? That's really nice for holding down uh, surface mount stuff. There's one with a couple of hooks. Good for when you're soldering, you need to pull a leg up against something. This one has a scraper and like a little knife, like if you're working on one of these Vero boards and you, know, you need to cut the trace, you can get in there and cut that trace. Then you don't have any connectivity between them. This type I find is really good for helping to bend the legs of different components. And this one, which looks really round on this side, is actually fluted on this side and is a reamer. If you have a hole that's a little too small, that will allow you to open it up just a little bit. Probably most important of all is a way to hold your projects that you're going to solder. Right now, my favorite thing, since I do mostly PC boards, is this little PC board holder. And again, I'll put a link down below. And it is fully adjustable. Just loosen those up. It is spring-loaded. And what's nice is it allows you to place your components on one side, flip it over, and solder it the other side. But what if you're not doing a PC board? Well, in that case, the helping hands type of solder holders can be really useful. This one is huge. It has a lighted magnifier. You can see the light there on this side. Yeah, plug it in here. Give me one second. It has a USB connector on it and a switch bright 
dim, off. Kind of like me, bright, dim, and off. Those are my three settings. But that's really helpful. And then it has these little bendy arms with insulated alligator clips that you can bend into shape to hold just about anything you want. Then you bring in that magnifier over top of it and you can get a really good up close view of what you're soldering. This has a nice heavy metallic base. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably steel. Let me see, I got a magnet here. Yes. Yep. Steel or iron. Yes, it could be nickel, but chances are it's not nickel. So just as important as being able to hold what you're soldering is being able to see what you're soldering. And for that, I like the old Optivisor has, you know, three different settings. You've got me, uh, low magnification, medium magnification. If you're really blind, boy, you put that guy in front of there. you got some serious magnification. How I time, team it up with my glasses and... Uh, you can see just about anything. Now, sometimes you need to desolder something. There are lots of different ways to do that. I like a simple handheld desoldering pump. Seems to do the trick 99% of the time, but it doesn't always pull all the solder out. If that's the case, good old fashioned braided copper desoldering wick will generally handle it for you. Um, that covers just about everything. The only other incidental I really keep around for soldering are some forceps for holding things. These kind, the reverse spring-loaded ones are really nice because you don't have to continually hold it. You just grab it in there and it'll hold them. And then I also keep a little Porch. No, you can't really see that flame. It's very blue. But I use that a lot for wires. Also good for shrink wrap, although you should really only use hot air for shrink wrap. So that gives you an idea of the equipment that I have around on my desk for soldering. Oh, I almost forgot. Protect your lungs. Some sort of a fume extractor. I have this one from F-Stop Labs. You can see it's just a big fan with a carbon impregnated filter. I usually have it going off camera because it's really loud if I have it here near the camera. I'll just keep it over there. And that covers just about everything I use for soldering. Hope this gives you some ideas. All right. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all my patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.